you're on startup club and today we're talking once and really trying to figure out you know what's the balance between those two things i mean as startups we work really hard and it's really a balance and, and speaking of balance welcome amber and michelle i'm double booked right now but i just wanted to sort of kick off the session and i'm gonna come back and listen to the replay uh, but very excited about the session you're going to put on today. S speaking of balance, Colin, right? Being bo double booked. There we go. There we go. Exactly. Right. <laughs> but I'm going to come back and listen to the recording. I think, you know, this is the kind of topics that we don't often talk about on Startup Club is really just understanding, you know, the complete entrepreneur, the holistic entrepreneur, and that this is not just about running a business, but it's also about running your life. And I just think I've listened to the last two sessions with Amber. They've been incredible and you're in for a treat today. It's going to be a real fun session. Excellent. So let's go ahead and get started. I see members starting to enter the room. Um, you're joining the complete entrepreneur and we're going to talk about hacks for work life balance with Amber Hacker. Yes, that's really her last name. So Amber is um, a Harvard Business Review contributor, meaning she writes articles and she has written them specifically on these kind of subjects and for Harvard. She is also the Vice President of Ops and Finance for Interfaith America, which helps organizations present equality and present balance for their employees in a very open and inclusive environment. So Amber, we're gonna just hit the ground rolling here. I see we have members in the room. Um, if you want to ask questions of Amber or you want to contribute your hacks, please just start raising your hand. Um, we plan on getting to the audience rather quickly here. So Amber, I, I need this one. I need it badly. So I'm really looking forward um, to your hacks here. So tell us. What is even work-life balance? I don't even know what it means anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much, Michelle. It's it's so great to be here. You know, it's interesting that you you mentioned that because there's actually a lot of literature out there on how work-life balance is actually not the right phrase to use, um, and that we should be saying. Uh, work-life harmony or work-life synergy, but given the growing demands that we have personally, given the growing demands that we have professionally, that saying work-life balance is that actually not as helpful um, as as we might think. So I think that's really where I would love to, to start the conversation. So um, in our last week's conversation, we talked about how are we creating um, meeting spaces that are the most helpful given that we're spending a lot of time in meetings. And, and in that conversation, I said, the most important thing that you should do in starting a meeting is stating the purpose. So I wanna practice what I preach. And really the purpose for us today is to have a conversation about work-life balance um, or another phrase that perhaps is <laughs> a little bit more accurate. And what I would love for us to do is to dig into how organizations can help with this and how we as individuals can help with this. Because it's not just the organizations that we start or that we create or that we work for. It's not solely their responsibility, but they have a role to play. And for us as individuals, we have a role to play in making sure that we are considering ways that we're balancing personal and professional demands. So that's how I would love to structure the conversation today in terms of how can organizations be attentive to this? Because I really believe that um, when organizations are attentive to this, that it's good for business. I think that maintaining a culture of excellence is super important. It's something that's very important to our organization. And that a culture of care does not have to be in opposition to maintaining a culture of excellence. I think those two things can go hand in hand. So that's what I'm really excited to have a conversation about today. So um, I would love to just open it up to talk about the challenge. So so what's, what's the challenge here? What are the things, as you think about work-life balance, what does that mean to you? And where do you struggle? Um, what do you find challenging about this? So let's let's spend a few minutes hearing from the audience about 
the challenge of this. And then I would love to move us into what are some ways that we can think about addressing this, um, using some hacks, as uh, Michelle said, that is my last name. I, I married, I luckily married into it. Um, I married him for other reasons other than just the last name, but the last name was a pretty sweet perk. Um, so as I mentioned, um, I would love to open it up to our audience. What is the challenge as you think about your own work-life balance? What are the challenges you encounter in this area? I would love to start on this um, because I feel like I have actually figured out some sort of formula that works for me. Um, I work at Startup Club uh, and maybe like I have a full time job and I'm the type of person that has big dreams and I want to do it all. But also have many, many, many challenges um, that get in the way of all these dreams. And first of all, I think having the right mindset has helped me a lot because I've learned to prioritize what needs to be done today. Now, not today, today, but now. And what I need from my environment to be to accomplish all these things. So I work full time at Startup Club. I'm currently at a doctorate program and like full time and I'm also a single mom. And on top of that, I love CrossFit and I try and spend a lot of hours at the gym. So I really have to juggle and try and do it all. And I think the number one thing that Startup Club has done for me in this aspect is they trust me and I work, get my work done at my own pace, at my own schedule, but I provide what I need to provide on time. So they trust me and they, and I return this whole thing with excellence, like you just said, Amber. So I may have a weird schedule, I may have a million things in my plate, but I prioritize my time in terms of what I need to do right now. And that process of learning how to prioritize has helped me accomplish all these things. I just want to leave it there so maybe someone else can jump in. Yeah, uh, I'd love to jump in, Olivia. That was that was uh, great, and I can relate to relate to that busy schedule as well. Um, you know, one thing I'd like to say is that we've all, at some point, um, asked for the plate that was served to us, right? Um, and that's the biggest thing about being intentional and really, um, you know. Being, being thoughtful of uh, getting what you wish for. Um, and a big thing um, I like to talk about a little bit, um, which I think Amber or Michelle talked about earlier, was the work-life balance. Um, it's never going to be balanced, right? Um, it, it's going to be either all in or all out. And if you're balanced, then, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Then you just live a certain kind of life, right? But when you're trying to be great, you want to achieve things, the, the, the balance is not going to be there. It's going to be all the way on one side, right? The pendulum is going to go swinging one way. It's not going to come back and forth or stay in the middle. Um, you know, we only have 24 hours in a day, right? And we have to start to prioritize what's important, right? So for me, it's mandatory that I have to get at least an hour to myself um, exercising, right? And then I know I have to, you know, take out my dogs, and then I know I have to spend time working. So it's kind of reverse engineering into what the priorities are um, in your life and kind of going down that way. Um, but, but yeah, man, it, it's when you want to be great and there's certain things you want to do and you have like some wild dreams um, that you want to execute and turn into reality, it's not going to be comfortable, right? It's comfortable at the end. You know, at the end, you know, right now, Michael Jordan, he's comfortable. He's He's got a, you know, Formula One, team he, he's got his own golf course he's has a cigar in his hand every day he's, he's he's playing golf at the end he's relaxing right but in the beginning it's countless hours in the gym countless sacrifices not seeing your kids as much not seeing your wife as much not being present 99 percent of the time it, it's 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 a sacrifice right i think that's a big thing people um don't understand is that when you get to where you want to get to and you start to see the stars align and you see that step that staircase going to where you want to go it's not going to be convenient. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to suck. But then it's like, do you really want it? Right? Um, and I've talked too much more. I want to give everybody else in the room 
um, a chance to talk. I'd love to hear um, what people have to say on this topic because I think it's uh, it's huge. Um, but you know, I think it's uh, it's just prioritizing um, and, and just really sticking to the script and seeing how bad you want it. Uh, I think that's huge. And, and one little hack that I will say that I've uh, I've used it's been very helpful is the calendar app on my iPhone. <laughs> so if there's one thing I know that's been my best friend lately, it's that calendar app. So go ahead, everybody, and, and, and use that calendar. It's there for a reason. Awesome. That's a great um, tip. So, Amber, you know, what are your thoughts on that, like that we can't have it all, or can we? Yeah, so I, um, that's a great question, Michelle and uh, Olivia and Ricky. I, I appreciate both of the the point, the many p good points that you all raised. Um, so just to say a quick word about that, you know, Olivia, you talked about having trust from your employer and how important that is to enable you to, as you think about your your work and life and all the different things that you have moving. And you said because of that trust, you are able to deliver excellence. And I just think that is such a key and important insight. Um, Ricky, I think that your point about it will never be balanced is right on. So, you know, one of the things that I like to say is instead of work-life balance, we should actually say work-life integration because you are exactly right. There's never going to be, or, or uh, work-life fit is another one that I've heard a lot. Um, but, you know, there's, there's never going to be an actual balance between the two. And, you know, what you said around you really have to prioritize what's important um, reminds me of a um, converse, the conversation we had here um, at Startup two weeks ago from today. Um, we talked about um, really prioritizing as we manage our time. And so you reminded me of one of the questions that I shared in that session, which I'll just mention it again because I just I thought it was such a helpful question. Is um, it's, it's a question that comes from um, a guy, Gary Keller, who wrote a book about this. Um, it's the question is, what's the one thing I can do such by doing it, everything else will be easier or unnecessary. So again, that question is, what's the one thing I can do such by doing it, everything else will be easier or unnecessary. And Rick, Ricky, your points reminded me of that question about, you know, it sounds like you kind of ask yourself that question every morning. And as you said, reverse engineer your day to really focus in on the priorities. Um, the other thing that I heard from both of you, which I think is really important, is both of you mentioned exercise and physical exercise and really focusing on physical health. Um, that's something that um, is resonant for me as well. I'm also a CrossFitter alongside Olivia. Um, I don't think I can lift nearly as much weight as she can, um, but it's really important for me. I noticed that if I don't exercise, I don't have as much energy, I have more stress, and I'm less able to do the things that I need to do in my work and in my life. So um, that was something else um, that I heard from both of you. Um, I'd love to hear from um, other folks on the stage, um, Joyce or other folks um, that wanna contribute, um, what you see as the challenge with work-life balance or work-life integration. <laughs> Oh, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I I agree with all those points. And honestly, I'm kind of new to the whole work-life balance thing. I just started a business recently. So for me, it's a really new territory, but um, I've been trying to do everything I can pretty much to kind of, you know, make schedules put make sure that I'm only prioritizing those things in my day that I know that need to be done urgently. Um, just being able to ask myself that question every morning, like, is this something that I can put off till tomorrow? Um, or, or do I really have to do it today? Um, and just doing other things to protect my mental health as well. Because I know once I do too much in one day, it could ruin me completely if I'm not just you know, taking those frequent breaks in between or getting the time I need to de-stress or do something for myself. Um, I know those are huge challenges for me and and a lot of other people for sure. Um, and it's really, it's also really difficult for me to even get an exercise too. Like I know that 
because I work full time as well, um, trying to run a business. Um, I'm also just starting school up again. Um, and it's so hard for me to actually like get out and do a lot of the things I want. And it's kind of hard because something has to give. And but, um, you know, it's really just like you guys were saying, it's just about being able to, you know, remember this is what you wanted. This is exactly what you know, you, you were working this hard for. So you just gotta be able to push through it whenever you feel like it's too much and, you know, but still being able to kind of draw back and say, okay, I deserve this break. I'm, I'm, a, I'm doing this so that I can keep going. And that's always, it's always hard too, because you have to have that self-talk with yourself and it's not, not every day is going to be that easy, but um, I feel like I'm starting to get there so I'm understanding like it's it's really important for me to take care of myself first and foremost. Thank you so much, Joyce. Um, other other folks that are on stage want to chime in here. Hi, everybody. This is my first time in this room and I would love to chime in. So I think it's not talked about enough, especially for early entrepreneurs, how when you are truly hustling and grinding and in those early years and people are watching you, they will try, they want a piece of the pie. So they're going to ask you to be a part of their organization, their board, to donate your time, to donate your money. And initially, I know I made the mistake of saying yes to everything, and I ended up on way too many boards, a part of way too many committees, and even organizations I was excited about working with, um, some of them, they didn't do anything but sit around a table and talk. Some of them did not have proper financial management. So really telling myself that I have to value my time, and I need to value my time in the same way that I value my money um help me grow my organization so i run a real estate business and when i make a hire for my admin positions on my team i am i'm really just buying back my time because i can do all of those things but i want my time back to give to my family and to put other places in so that's just a lesson that i wish um you know, maybe someone had talked to me about early on. Could I jump in? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, first thing, thank you so much for inviting me on the stage. It's my first time here and um, Forgive my English because I don't understand yet English and I don't speak English perfectly. I'm Italian, business owner and entrepreneur. And um, what Joy said uh, and what I can tell at 100% school doesn't teach you to be business owner and entrepreneur. School can give you the best education or ever to be the best employee. It's different. In Italy, we have Bocconi, in, in USA, Harvard. But you can tell me, please, how is possible? The best school in the world to be business or entrepreneur? The teacher wants to teach me to be a best business or entrepreneur and to find a balance his employee or all his life is impossible. Why I can tell it? My name is Giuseppe. I'm Italian, business owner and entrepreneur. In Italy, I had several hotel, restaurant, franchising, in vitamin store, gym, property management company, and over 1,000 employees. To have the balance depends on what is your goal. Because some people have a perfect balance, you know, because they don't want to be rich and they know the secret of the rich people. Poor mindset, they want money, if they don't understand the secret is they never need to work for money. They need to work for a project, a service. What is your service? What is your product? What is what you what you want to realize? Money follows a project in your life. Everybody around me, they want to teach me to make money. But what is incredible is they don't have money. And why I want to tell it, you know? 
the balance depends what is your goal because when you started from zero and you realize incredible number and your business passed you know six years ago i started to live in usa today i have 115 employees and the best that become because like i said my english is not perfect yet you want your balance depend what is what, what big is your goal because um, if i tell you this in this stage you know I don't work a Saturday, Sunday. I want to give my time free for my family. I'm a liar. I'm not a liar. For this, no. Sometimes I know people that are very happy to work 60 hours per day, 18 hours per day, Saturday, Sunday. Balance is when you are happy to do that. When you ring the holler and you say, oh my God, I need to go work. That is the problem. But if you awake before ring your holler you are very lucky do you know why people continue to ask me if uh, was it true my story homeless sleep in the car lost any money to receive the visa and today i have a, an empire in real estate do you know why because uh, no one time no one person around me can stop my dream when you have a dream no matter doesn't matter english italian language you have uh, the power other people around you they don't recognize no one pay. you are a tornado you are a fire in your eyes the passion that you have when you speak it's it's incredible and for this my little humble suggest is your bad balance is when you are happy because if you are happy you can be rich in your life but trust me if you are rich i'm not sure that you are happy my business partner he is a billionaire and a billionaire i know very well the difference between millionaire and billionaire he is depressed, he uses drug farms, and he called me anytime like he's a psychiatric. And do you think that in this room you want to be billionaire or you want to be happy? Try to think that. Life is too short. And I finished to talk with this, this thing that if you want to be great in your life, work to improve yourself. Doesn't matter what people say is impossible. Remember to them with a smile. When people say it impossible, my, 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 in the first time I, I was rude because I didn't use English like I wanted. And I say for you, not for me, who you are to tell me what is possible or is impossible. Remember them. Thank you so much to show me your limit, not my limit. This is me. This is Giuseppe. Back to you, Michelle Oamba. Giuseppe, thank you so much for sharing. Um, so much um, great wisdom and what you shared about the importance of mindset in all of this and, and really thinking about what your goals are and sometimes what you think will will make you happy and work-life balance are not actually the things that will make you happy. Um, thank you so much for sharing um, and, and so much that you've accomplished. Um, and Joyce, I just love what you shared around protecting mental health and how, you know, that reminds me of um, so many people and clients that I work with um, that when they don't protect mental health, um, you know, and, and they just keep grinding and keep grinding, eventually they will have to pay attention to mental health. So, you know, you talked about um, the importance of taking breaks, um, really focusing on what the end goal is. Um, Gabby, I loved, loved, loved what you said about how you think about your time the same way you think about your money. And that's exactly right, because, you know, the, the old adage is that time is money. And that's true because our time, there's an opportunity cost with our time. Um, when we're getting paid by organizations or as an organization that we, start, we started and um, you know, as entrepreneurs and thinking about the value of our time and building business and, and bu capacity building and building organizations. Um, and you talked about saying yes to too much. And that's definitely something um, that I personally have struggled with and um, you know the way that you said you were able to help um, address that was valuing your time the same as your money, which I just think is such a smart insight. Um, really, really appreciate that. Um, so I would, I would love. Um, you know, we, we have a lot of uh, first timers here, which is awesome. I love it. Um, I would love to shift the conversation to talk about what can we as entrepreneurs, as leaders, as um, you know, people that help shape uh, policies at organizations, what are things that we can do? You know, I said at the very beginning, 
um, that work-life balance is somewhat of a misnomer, that it's more about um, work-life integration. And also work-life balance, I think, um, in some of the literature that I've read, really the folks that um, push back against that language say that um, it puts all of the burden on the individual instead of actually getting organizations to think about how they think about this. And so I would love to to start the or to continue the conversation with thinking about what are things that organizations can do to help with work-life balance, work-life integration. I think one of the most obvious things is time off and paid time off and sick leave, um, these kinds of important things. And so as you're creating organizations and shaping policies, or even you know thinking about this for yourself, um, I think that this is super important. And this is actually something that our organization um, recently did. Um, we have started, you know, we were trying to figure out what's a way that we can show our people that we really appreciate them. People have been working really, really hard. We just recently had a big rebranding. We had a new website. We changed the organization's name. We had sort of got, we had sprinted a marathon. And we were trying to figure out how can we show our people that we appreciate them. And the idea came that we should close down the office for a whole week and we should give everybody a week off. And at one point we considered letting people choose when to take a week off, but we actually found um, through research that people appreciate having time off at the same time. And so we closed down the office for the entire week. And the reason for this is because um, people get work FOMO when they have vacation and their colleagues do not. It's this um, recent, where it's a phenomenon where um, if you're on vacation, but your colleagues aren't, the temptation to check email on your phone is higher, for example, because you know other people are working and there might be something you're missing out on with work. And so this was a, a really meaningful way to help people actually slow down. Um, and so that's that's one of, one of the things that we did. And I want to be really clear that um, we have a culture of excellence at my organization. And that's something that's really important. We have high standards for people. And I think that, that giving people time off and flexibility, um, Olivia, this is something you mentioned in your comments as well. I think that flexibility is so, so important in showing trust in people as well. Um, but time off is um, something that I have found and my work at my organization um, is incredibly important. And actually, um, interestingly enough, it I find that it increases productivity. And so there's a um, Harvard Business Review uh, article called The Data-Driven Case for Vacation. And they found studies that when people take vacation, they have greater successes at work and they're also, they also have lower stress. Um, there's, a, I, I read recently um, in a um, Time Magazine article that 55% of vacation days go unused in the United States. Um, so people have vacation, but they're not taking it. Um, and we, we can see empirical data that shows taking time away can really boost productivity and creativity, which is ultimately good for the organizations that we're starting or that we work for, and it's good for employees. Um, and so you know, it's interesting because there's a law of diminishing returns when it comes to work. Um, a lot of studies that show once you hit the 55 hour mark, um, productivity really um, takes a nosedive. There's some studies from Stanford University that, that show this. And so I'm really interested in hearing from others. You know, there's a lot of studies and data that show time off is really important. How do we balance that with all of the other demands, right? So clearly, you know, with our organization, we closed shop for the entire week. That meant that the weeks surrounding it were pretty busy, right? Because then that the week that we were gone, we had to move all of the meetings and projects and things that we were doing to other weeks and we kind of cram those in so that way we could make time and space to be off for that entire week. Um, and I would love to hear from you all as entrepreneurs, as people that are growing and shaping your own organizations, um, how do you think about time off? Um, this is such a key way that I think organizations can um, help shape policies and practices to help employees um, with their own work-life balance or work-life integration. Um, so I would love to hear 
um, I would love to open it up back up to our speakers and how you think about time off. Um, how do you think about it as an entrepreneur? How have you um, experienced this um, with organizations you've started or organizations you've been part of? What are some best practices in this area? Yeah, I can start. I mean, it, it can be a real challenge, right, with some employees. Some want to take off lots of time. And then I seem to have, you know, a very loyal group and they don't seem to want to take any time off. So I have a particular employee. She works so extremely hard. I literally have to set her down every year and make her take time off. It's so important. And, and I know personally, I don't always lead a good example, but I would say it's so absolutely critical. But us as managers or bosses or, you know, whatever our role is, coworkers, right? We really need to support each other. We need to not feel envious. We need to not feel like they're going to be punished, right? Or they're going to come back and, you know, their whole work life is turned upside down or that things are piled up on their desk. We have to enable it and we have to help them set these boundaries. Um, I think that's absolutely critically important. For example, when people come back from whatever, a week or two weeks, whatever it is they choose works for them. Like, don't just like slam them with a bunch of work and make them feel guilty. Like give them even, I think, you know, a day or two space and help them, you know, pace themselves, help them like maybe review the schedules or something that new came in so you can reprioritize. That's how I think you really support, not just by saying, but by actually doing. Thank you. I also wanted to add that sometimes people need a day off for mental health day, whatever they need, and not necessarily has to be an entire week of vacation or have, I feel like we, miss that point where it's not about having plans to go somewhere it's just to rest so the way it works for me in particular is i take single days off just to like regroup and and rest for that entire day i'll add to you just um perspective um so I have real estate agents, which is obviously kind of different than a nine to five type of position, but I also have admin positions. And for the agent, we really make sure that when an agent is going on vacation or they're going to be out of town with family, we have their clients covered. We will do showings, you know, as a group, that is just part of our team culture. Um, and then same when my nine to five people um, take time off, we kind of implement systems up to leading, leading up to before they leave so that nothing gets missed and they're not having to work while they're on vacation. And lastly, um, cause I think Amber, you were talking in general, like what do we do besides time off um, to have a certain culture at our office? I recently started doing kind of um, incentive-based training and learning because as agents, it's really important to um, learn not only like just the required education, but to know what's happening in your communities and economic development and all of those things. So they basically at every office meeting, they get a raffle ticket for any training that they have been to, any chamber of commerce event they've been to, um, there, there's a whole list of items they get and we raffle off. It's a hundred bucks at every meeting. It's not much, but they get so excited about it and they get really competitive and they want to see who has the most entries for that. Um, so that's something I've started doing that I've had great success with. And then when I was building my company, um, because I was a single mom for a really long time and my kids went to so many different meetings with me, um, places where they were definitely the only kids in the room. I wanted to create a very family friendly environment in my office. So you can look at pictures and videos of any of our office meetings. We've got at 
least three kids there. We've got a baby that has grown up in our office. She um, was born. My agent was so like worried about, oh my gosh, I have to find her daycare. What am I going to do? And I'm like, look, you're an agent because you want to kind of run your own schedule. Just we'll work around it, like we'll make this work. And so he did not have to put his baby in childcare um, and she's got a playpen at the office. And so that was something that was just, I know that isn't gonna work for every office, but for me, that was important. Thank you so much. Um... You know, I, Gabby, and what you just said, I think so many pearls of wisdom there. Um, you know, your point about as we think about work-life balance, it looks different based on the position, whether you're, you know, someone who's nine to five or you're an agent and you sort of work all different hours. And then your point about how we how we cover for each other and how we how we achieve as a team, how we contribute to this as a team and how we um, help each other when someone needs to step in or step back. I just think that's such a key insight. Um, the last thing, um, I'll, the, what it means to be family friendly, I think that is so, so important. And I wanna touch on that in just a moment. Um, Olivia, I think your point about recognizing that sometimes people just need to take a day off and just need, um, you know, might need a, a mental health day and it doesn't have to look a certain way. It doesn't have to be five days or doesn't have to be this. Um, flexibility is so key. And then I think, Michelle, your point about how we have to work with people to set boundaries and have to recognize that if we have teammates that are, are not really good about taking time off, um, that it's important to recognize that because we want to keep people. We want to retain people. Um, we don't want to burn them out. I think that that's just so critical. Um, I would love to... Um, I would love to maybe um, touch on a theme that, that Gabby brought up, which is, you know, how can we create organizations and cultures that are family friendly? Um, and, you know, I would, you know, Gabby, you mentioned that um, you were a single mom, um, you know, Olivia, I would love to hear from you on this as well. Um, but I, I would love for y'all to talk a little bit more about this, because I think that this is um, so important. And then, of course, anybody else who wants to chime in. Um, you know, for me, this is not just a policy thing. So I see a lot of, you know, I see a lot of articles, um, you know, that talk about the policies that we need to have in place to be family friendly workplaces, to keep women in the workplace after they have children. I'm a working mom. I have two kids. And that's all incredibly important, right? So I think, you know, having, um, you know, having uh, maternity leave and some of these kinds of policies in place is, is really important. But it's not the only thing, um, you know, so I actually spoke on a panel at um, Kellogg, Northwestern Kellogg School of Business a couple years ago with some other women um, in the business school. And we talked about how you could have these policies in place, but if people are not, if they don't feel the permission to use the policies, then they're, then they're useless, right? And so I, I really think about as, as a leader at my organization, I think I take vacation and I go on vacation and I don't put in my out of office, my cell phone number. I don't say, if you need me, text me. I say I'm on vacation and I will be back on X date. And I look forward to responding to your message at that time. And I really encourage my people take vacation. Don't check work email. If there's really something on fire, I promise we'll call or text you. But otherwise, we really want you to be able to unplug because all the research shows that if you really unplug, you're going to be a lot more useful to us when you get back. Um, and so that's something that I think about is, you know, not only how are we creating policies, but how are we also creating cultures that are family friendly, that enable work-life balance, work-life integration. I would love to hear some moms, um, working parents on this, because I think this is just so, so important. So I'll add that COVID really set women back in the corporate world and the business industry. You can look at the statistics on how many women had to leave their careers to stay home with their kids because everything was virtual. And it was just kind of expected that that's what they were going to have to do, especially if they did not have a work from home option. Um, 
so one thing for me when I'm talking to women and, and young moms, and I hear a lot of moms say, like, well, I'm just going to have to wait until my kids are out of the house before I can get involved in anything. And it makes me sad because I think about how much, how many great minds and how much talent is not coming to the table because we're putting them in the box that they can only be a mom right now. Like my kid, I, my kids, they're in the car right now listening. They could tell you so many stories. I mean, my daughter lost a tooth at a city council meeting. Like they I have did. been, yes, you did. They have been to, you know, all different kinds of things. And there were some meetings where people, you know, could, were like, why is she here with her kids? But guess what? I brought something to the table and that helped me build the foundation for where I am now. If I had to sit there and just wait until they were gone for me to do something, I wouldn't have the business that I have now. That's great, Gabby. I love what you said before about some kids literally growing up in the office. And that's, I think that's my favorite thing about Startup Club where I work at right now because I got hired. I think the same day that I interviewed and it was right after the first year of COVID and I'm a single mom. So I, I don't know if it's a bad thing or a good thing, but I don't have the option to just stay home. Um, so I told Michelle, like, I'm more than happy to start tomorrow, but right now my son is at home because um, during that time, whenever a kid in the class had COVID, all the, the entire class had to go home and do homeschool. So I had my son with me that week and she was like, bring him in. And since that day, he came in every day after school. I didn't have to pay for aftercare during the summer. He, <laughs> he even got jobs at the office and it became part of the family, the, the office family. They even like threw him a birthday party, just like they would do to any other employee at the office. And that is gold for me that there is no amount of salary that would replace that feeling of we are welcomed and i can not worry about this part of my life because i can i have it covered and i can focus on work thank you so much um to olivia and gabby for sharing i think so much of what I see in, in both of your responses are the importance of modeling, um, you know, um, not only, you know, modeling as a leader, which, you know, Gabby, you did, um, you know, but also, you know, having, having relationships and having a flexible workplace um, that allows for that. And then, you know, Olivia and what you said, sort of taking it up a notch further, it's not only allowed, it's welcomed, right? Like having a birthday party for your son is such a beautiful, I love that. And that's such a beautiful example of, you know, we're not only, you know, we're a family friendly workplace, but for real, we are a family friendly workplace, right? You know, so it's, it's definitely in the culture. Those are, are great examples. Um, other would love to hear um, from other folks. Um, uh, Giles, I don't believe you've had a chance to chime in. Um, do you have thoughts on uh, work-life balance, creating family-friendly workplaces, um, the importance of time off? Would love to give you an opportunity to speak. Hey, Giles, you might be on mute. It's the little right button. Okay, we'll get we'll give Giles a moment to figure figure out technology. Um, feel free to chime in when if you're able to get back on. Um, I'd love to um, take a quick look at um, the chat. Um, Chief Patrick um, made a great point here about time off um, about time off being important for his team. Uh, he's in a high energy driven business. And you said they tend to make mistakes normally that they wouldn't have. Employees feel rejuvenated after their days off or their leave days. I think that's exactly right. And I've absolutely seen that in the work that I do as well, um, in that it's um, it's incredibly important um, not only to retain staff, but also as we think about productivity and work product, um, that time off can play a really 
um, key role in that. And it's somewhat paradoxical, right? You think about taking taking time off being good for business, but taking time off really is good for business, right? Um, in a balance, um, and, and, and everything has to be a balance, right? Um, so I would love to turn um, as we as we look at um, the last last you know 15 minutes or so we have on this talk I would love to turn our attention to you know we've talked about how do we think about this organizationally how do we think this about this as individuals um, and so you know one thing that I coach people on is having a some sort of system a productivity um, system or planner um, something that you trust that can capture all the different things that you have in your personal and professional life. Um, and so, you know, I, um, I, I'm, I would love to share, you know, some of the things that, that I utilize myself and things that I work with clients on. Um, but I would love to open it up and, and tap into the wisdom of this group because you all have, have shared such great insights in terms of as what are systems, what, what are time management systems that you use. So there's so many of these out there. There's the Franklin Covey planner, there's the focus planner, there's the dream planner, there's um, the getting things done system, there's the bullet journal method, um, there's all kinds of um, digital tools for this, um, project planning tools and individual tools. Um, so I would love to just hear um, from the room, what are what are ways that you keep yourself organized and keep track of all the different priorities that you have in your personal and professional life? And do you like it? Would you recommend it? I honestly have no idea what this is called, but I do the plain, simple, old school bullet point list. <laughs> And I write it, I do know that if I write it down, I will remember. Um, so I, I am very strict with myself about writing everything I need to do down on a piece of paper with a bullet point style. So I know it's a task that I need to get done. And I've tried other systems and reminders and digital things, and they just don't work as well as me writing it down on a piece of paper. That might just be me. Oh, go ahead, Michelle. Yeah, I'm one of those people that are always looking for the perfect system. Um, right now, we're actually on our team trying out uh, Monday.com, which we have high hopes for. You know, one of the challenges is we all have to kind of commit to using it or it doesn't work so well. So I, I'm, yeah, I'm interested in hearing like you are, like, things that people say work, but I'm also an old fashioned list maker and I'm trying to, you know, expand to something more um, technology based. Great. Thank you so much um, to both of you for, share for sharing. Um, you know, so Olivia, I think you are definitely not alone. A lot of folks use um, the old fashioned lists and um, Michelle, I am with you. I am always looking for the perfect system. And as somebody that does trainings on time management, I've used a lot of them and I have walked with people that have used a lot of different systems. Um, and I'll say, I'll say up front, friends, there is no perfect system out there. Um, they, there are good enough systems out there. Um, and the, the re there's, there's no perfect system that's going to magically solve your work-life balance. However, the right system is one that you actually use. And I think that's so important because whatever it is that you use, um, it's not going to work for you if you don't use it. Um, and there's studies that show that it takes an average of three months to fully implement a time management system. Um, and what's interesting about this, Gabby, it reminds me of something you said earlier. You said you think about your time as money. Um, I also um, work with people on budgets. I oversee um, finance as part of my role at um, my organization. And I have found in personal budget and um, personal finance, the same rule exists when people cre are creating um, personal or household budgets, that it takes three months to actually really utilize 
and implement a budget system. So it's interesting that you, Gabby, made the parallel between time and money because that's actually um, interesting that it takes three months to use a budget and it takes, takes three months to use an individual time management system. Um, and so what I want to touch on here is a little different than um, organization time management systems, which are things, could be things like Asana and Slack, or maybe, um, you know, something that you mentioned, Michelle. Um, this is really about what is an individual um, system that you can use to track all the different prior priorities that you have and that you have moving. And so um, there are a lot of them out there. I personally really like the bullet journal method. And um, the bu bullet journal method is a book written by a guy named Ryder Carroll. Um, it's a great book. He talks about how he's somebody who really struggled with ADHD and struggled with a system to really help him get things done. Um, he created the bullet journal system. Um, the, we, we talked, uh, I think it was last week or two weeks ago, how we don't want to let perfect be the enemy of the good. So perfect would be if you decide you want to go read the book, but don't let perfect be the enemy of the good. If you're interested in the bullet journal system, I recommend you watch the three minute video that's on YouTube that introduces it. And what is the bullet journal? It um, essentially is um, a, a notebook that contains sections that help you log all of your to-dos, but also help you keep um, weekly and monthly calendars. It's a place to jot down notes, but also to jot down um, next actionable next steps. In our conversation two weeks ago, we talked about the importance of having action-focused next steps. Um, and also to track your psychological and your mental health. Um, several of you um, have mentioned mental health um, on the call today and the importance of protecting mental health. Um, and it also is a great way to track short-term and long-term goals. Um, and I have personally found, you know, some people like digital tools and there's some good ones out there. I like having something physical. Um, Olivia, you mentioned when you write something down, then that will help you remember it and get it done. And there's a lot of studies that, sh that back that up that show if you have something that's analog and that when you're physically writing something, that that can make a big difference, both in terms of memory, but also in terms of follow through, in terms of actually getting something done. Um, so if you don't have a system, I highly recommend having a personal individual system for getting things done um, as a way to help enhance your work-life balance or your work-life integration because there's so much that is coming at us on the day-to-day, -day, right? And so really, you know, what I do with clients is I work with clients to really think about, let's collect everything that's on your mind, everything that's on your mind. Let's collect all the to-dos, everything that you may think of. In fact, I put lists in front of people that help prompt them of, oh, I need to do that. They're um, implementation lists. And then we put it into a system that you trust. And that's super, super important um, because I think that if you're going to have an individual time management system, again, it's no good if you don't use it. And then the importance of reviewing it consistently. That's something that I work with um, clients on of making sure that, you know, you're not only putting it into something, but you're also taking a look at it on a daily, weekly basis. <clears throat> so I would love to open it up to the... Um, to the room one final time and would love to hear if, if folks have um, anything to chime in on, anything to add on that as you think about, you know, tracking your own to do's um, in your personal and professional life, um, things that you have found particularly helpful, either if you have a system you use or you don't, you don't have a system, but you found some other um, ways um, and, and hacks that have really helped you as you think about um, managing um, all the things that we have in our work life and our professional, professional and personal lives. So I'll add, um, I use Trello for my team and we use Google Drive. Um, we have a lot of checklists and I pretty much just made those templates from scratch just so they're specific to our team process. And then when it comes to planning out my day, I like to do a bulleted, um, bulleted note like on a physical piece of paper on a notepad. And I think this part is important. If you have something like, let's say it's going to take three steps, don't just write what that thing is down. 
write the three steps as three individual bullet points because you're going to check these items off. I personally like to cross through them, and it's going to help you feel like you're actually accomplishing stuff instead of, you know, you wrote that down and you didn't get it done because it has three steps. Now you got the first two done, and tomorrow you're going to transfer the third one to your new list. So I date my list. Um, and I like to do it the night before or like early in the morning before anyone gets up. It just helps me feel prepared for my day. And then anything that doesn't get done just gets transferred over to tomorrow's list. Thank you so much, Gabby. I love your insights on how you both do this organizationally and how you do this personally. And, um, you know, transferring the different priorities reminds me of so many different time management systems that are out there. And I think it's a super smart um, way to approach this. Um, well, this has been such um, a helpful conversation. I've learned new things on here and I'm just so appreciative of our speakers um, and the folks in the chat um, who have um, contributed um, insights into this just really important and huge and rich topic. Um, so thank you. And I'm going to um, think turn things over back to you, Michelle. Excellent. Thank you so much, Amber. This has been part of a three-part series. So if you want to go back and look at this session as well as the last two and at least 200 other ones, please go to www.startup.club. You can um, read transcripts or listen to the replays or look at a blog post. Um, we're quite committed here on Startup Club to getting you this good, useful content. Um, if you want to get notified about really cool talks like this one and others like the Serial Entrepreneur, which will be on tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern, you can uh, feel free to sign up for the newsletter. Uh, that typically is about once a week, and we promise that we do not spam. So once again, thank you for all the members for this special um, little three-part series that Amber has brought to us. And I don't know about everyone else, but I'm sure hoping that we can get her back to talk more about this topic and maybe even on her own show. So thank you for participating in The Complete Entrepreneur and the Startup Network. Thank you so much, members, and thank you so much, Amber. Thank you so much, Michelle. Have a wonderful, long weekend. Thank you.